Good afternoon. I'm Melanie Risden with the Western Standard, and we're just doing a check-in with uh, Constable uh, Brian Dennison, who is now no longer with the CPS. Uh, he's tendered his resignation. And uh, Brian, we wanted to check in with you and just see how things are going. I know we've seen that you have um, been speaking uh, at some of the rallies and the get-togethers. Um, yeah, just tell me, tell me where things are at right now. Well, it's been kind of a whirlwind of the last few weeks um, since all this is, has come out and the, the video kind of went wild. Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to just say uh, that I'm, I'm really enthused with the people's um, ability to come around and su support me because it was a difficult time going through that. Uh, where I stand now is um, I had been speaking out uh, about that video and I've been speaking out about uh, the way I see things uh, with regards to the mandates and uh, the testing, especially at, at CPS. And uh, what has happened is that uh, CPS decided that no longer Brian will speak and they uh, sent me a direct order, which was basically a cease and desist letter, uh, which was a direct order. And that was one order that I kind of looked at and I went, you know what, that really doesn't have uh, anything to do with my stance on the mandates. And it was a direct order to me. So I really sat and thought about what my options were. And one of my options was to disobey that direct order. And um, in the police service, uh, that's something that I, I could not do as an officer. I couldn't um, disobey uh, my superintendent's direct order to me, even though um, it was uh, kind of about what I was doing uh, and speaking up. Uh, but again, it was a direct order. So I decided that it's best for me now to speak from outside of the police service. So as of um, Saturday morning, I uh, resigned from the police service. Okay. So Brian has been a, a police officer with the CPS for 24 years. You were, uh, just for people who maybe um, haven't heard your story, you were about a year away from, from retiring from CPS. And um, let, let's just do a kind of a quick timeline here. Uh, just, just of, of, you know, how all of this played out. You, when you did the video, you, you produced a video where you um, were sitting in your cruiser uh, in full uniform and we're talking about these mandates. Uh, just, yeah, let's talk about a quick timeline, how that all played out. Okay, so um, I'll go way back to when this whole pandemic started and um, things were really crazy. We were wearing uh, biohazard suits and masks and we had goggles and stuff we have to wear and um, to run into any type of uh, emergency situation they wanted you to put this stuff on and it just seemed very uh, difficult to ad ad adhere to those type of policies that they were bringing mm -hmm. in so I worked uh, that whole time um, doing those things uh, wearing my mask when appropriate um, and um, all that stuff was very cumbersome for my job, trying to be able to do my job correctly. And I worked throughout that whole pandemic uh, up to um, getting let go, basically, or, or um, suspended. And I did my job. I showed up for work. Um, I performed my duties. And uh, I never let uh, the pandemic keep me from doing that. So during that time, I couldn't... Um, I couldn't... Um, believe uh, where uh, this country was going with the mandates and with forcing people to get this vaccine. I felt that um, there was a lot of coercion going on. There was a lot of bullying uh, within my workplace just by uh, the, some of the stances they were taking on, on how they were trying to get people to start taking the vaccine. So now we're up to this year and um, the chief was, when I made the video, the chief was actually considering bringing in a mandate. And I heard rumors of what they're going to be putting in it and how they were going to go about that. And um, that it was going to be, you get the mandate, you put, or they will put you on an unpaid leave if you don't. Uh, and that they were thinking about testing. So when I actually did that video, I was at the point in my life where I go, I can't keep not saying something. So the, right. the, the audience of that video was fellow police officers that we had a group of. And I was trying to get them to, I'm trying to get them rallied up to 
we need to stand up for this. You need to stand up for what is lawful. And my target audience was 174 people. Um, so the chief has gone on that uh, the CBC and said recently that um, I was forwarding my own agenda or it was a, a power grab. That's not it at all. I was actually speaking to other police officers uh, and trying to get them to stand up. Where it has gone from now is I, I'm speaking to everybody. And it, right. I'm glad it did go out. Um, so that's kind of where the video came from. And since then, I couldn't be quiet. I can't, um, I, I can't stop letting people know that what is happening is wrong. And I just want to touch on one thing. Um, there is a competency within the Calgary Police Service. There are seven core values. And one of them is courage. And in there, they state that it, it, it's standing up uh, for what is wrong. Like you're standing your ground. And that's what I'm doing. I'm standing my ground. I have lived up to um, all of those attributes of a police officer. And I continue to. Though some people try to demonize me now and say that I'm, I was on the street for 24 years, so you can't be a good cop. Well, I can tell you that that is policing. Policing is working the street. Um, so that is the essence of policing. So I find myself now not a police officer, um, technically with them, but I'll always refer to myself as a police officer and I'll continue to act the same way that I've acted throughout my 24 year career. Now, what has come, cause I know when you did that video and it started to spread, um, I know that you were charged internally with insubordination and um, I, I believe another charge internally. Yes, discreditable conduct. What has, what's come of that? Do, do those just go away now? Do they, how, how does that affect the outcome for you in the end here? So those are internal charges. They're under the police act that the chief can see, seek remedy for um, breaches of their policy. Um, so those are, um, are done away with. As soon as I'm no longer a policeman, right. they don't have jurisdiction over me. Uh, they can't tell me not to speak. They can't tell me what to say. Um, and those things, they never were anything criminal in nature. It was a breach of their COVID-19 policy. Right. Now, what about other consequences from, from all of this, Brian? Any kind of uh, consequence to, you know, receiving any, you know, days that you had banked or um, any pension, anything there? No. Uh, again, we're... I have a contract, which, well, right now we're without a contract. We're still trying to negotiate with the city. So it reverts back to the old one. But um, the contract, they can't nullify anything uh, like my holiday hours, um, any of my banked hours from overtime, uh, anything that they owe me, uh, I will be receiving. Uh, so that that is not an issue. And, and uh, the people that I have been dealing with since my resignation have been very, very helpful. How do you plan to continue to stand for this? How do you plan to uh, further your message to people? Well, I'll continue to speak with, with you. I'll continue to speak with any news or organization that will actually um, tell the truth and uh, get both sides of a story and to uh, not just go out and try to vilify someone for what they're saying. I'll do that. I've also been approached by um, a great group. Uh, it's unbelievable. I don't know if I can drop everyone's name here. Um, I did have them, but um, it's a group of um, people. It's called uh, Taking Back Our Freedoms. And what they did, I'm just going to bring it up here quickly. What they did is they um, asked me to um, be on a board of advisors after my resignation had come up. And they've got some powerful people uh, on this, like for instance, the, the chair of it is uh, Brian Petford. He was a premier uh, and he's heading up this whole thing. They've got Dr. Roger Hodkinson, they got Dr. Paul Alexander. These are big names that are talking about what's going on. Uh, Dr. Jessica Rose, Dr. Eric Payne, who we all know uh, from Calgary. Uh, they got Corporal Daniel Bulford. He was the security detail Red, for the- Redford, DA. I think, yeah. So, They've, they've got a lot of good people on there and I'm thinking about uh, starting to uh, help them out with, with what they're doing and they're going 
uh, through their MLAs up into the government. So I will continue on in that front. I'm, I'm happy to go uh, and start putting my, my um, talent to use with, with them. And um, I'll continue to talk to anybody at rallies um, and I won't, uh, I won't be going away. I'll still be here. I'll still be doing whatever I can. Are you pursuing any legal action, any legal advice, uh, anything there? Uh, at this point, I, I don't know. I haven't spoken to a lawyer outside of, uh, I had I had a lawyer through my union, uh, great guy, very, very helpful, uh, but I haven't seeked anything outside uh, of that at this point. Okay. Now for the record, Brian, I wouldn't mind just touching on, I know, uh, I know some of the media uh, chose to really zone in on that comment you made about um, this being some, you know, something towards the Holocaust and being a Nazi um, action. And uh, you were vilified for that. Um, I just wanted to give you the, the chance to, to speak to that. I know um, uh, your intention was not to be disrespectful, but uh, do you want to say something on the record for that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so as everyone should know as well as uh, I didn't put it in my video, but I was a hate crimes coordinator for three years in this city. And um, during that time that I was, there was a great uh, problem with neo-Nazis and hate groups in our city. And they did all kinds of protests and violent ones at that. Um, so th that's who I had dealt with. I received a lot of training through conferences and stuff that I went through. And of course, I'm gonna know about uh, the Holocaust. Of course, I'm gonna know about what happened in Germany in the 1930s and the rights were slowly stripped away from, from the Jewish people. And of course, I'm going to know about that. So when I'm making that video, the first thing I think of, what do I know the most about? Well, that's what I know the most about. Uh, throughout history, it's happened uh, many times. That's not the only time in history that I could have picked, but it's one that really stood out to me. And it should stand out to everybody because we got to make sure that that type of history does not repeat. And I wasn't... Um, I wasn't uh, demeaning uh, the Jewish people whatsoever. I've worked with them during hate crimes uh, when I was in the hate crimes uh, portfolio there. And um, that's not what I was saying. The news media, the mainstream guys decided to slant it that way. They took 10 seconds out of my 10 minute video and decided that that's how they'll, they'll get rid of me. They'll cancel Brian uh, due to that and they found somebody to make a comment. Well, I can tell you since then, I probably got 500 people that made the exact opposite statement to what he had said about me in the media. Uh, and they're saying, you know what, you are right. The correlations are there. People's rights are being taken away. Segregation is happening and that can't be repeated. Segregation has never worked in this world. And to think that it's gonna work now is ridiculous. So. Just to sum all that up, there was no intention to demean uh, the Jewish people. I love them. I, I've worked with them. Um, I've supported them. Uh, that was not the intention. That was twisted. Well, thanks for clearing that up, uh, Brian. Now, you mentioned um, your thoughts around the active cases that are sort of springing up right now with this new variant and, uh, you know, moving into a, a flu season. Of course, we're going to see... Um, more people getting sick. What were your thoughts there? Well, I, I looked at the chart yesterday and I have it in front of me here, put out by the Alberta government. And 80.94% uh, of the new active cases are with the vaccinated, like totally vaccinated, the two shots. Um, like partial vaccinated is 072 and the unvaccinated is 18.33% of the new cases. Um, just, I'll touch on two other ones here. So the uh, total vaccinated hospitalizations is 35%. The unvaccinated is 30% for active, like there's, there's no, sorry. The active cases are 68% and the active cases for the unvaccinated are 30%. So the, there's a huge difference than what they've been telling us uh, that was gonna happen. And it's starting to rise every single day. 
the numbers are going up. So um, we're not listening to the science. If this was about science, then things would have changed by now. So what they're doing is they're dividing. They're dividing um, our nation. They're dividing our cities, our, our, our people. They are putting us into two different categories and they're demonizing mm -hmm. the unvaccinated still. But yeah. it really shows that that is not it. Well, and I, I did go over that data with uh, a medical professional um, that was posted on the Alberta government website. And I, I, I basically have been told that obviously what it's showing and what, what everyone has agreed to is that the, the efficacy of the, the vaccines don't last forever, right? This is why we're moving into boosters. Um, the other, the other point is, is the fact that that's, there's such a high percentage of people vaccinated, but yet such a high percentage of cases. So really at the end of the day, um, the narrative has to change based on this information that it is not just the unvaccinated that are catching, carrying and transmitting COVID. And um, you know, that's not to say that there is some protection uh, from the vaccines. That's not to, to, to dispute that. Um, you know, a, a lot would argue that with the vaccine, you are going to have better protection for severe outcomes in some cases, some cases maybe not, but, um, but that seems to be the argument. But, but you're right. I think that the segregation and the idea that, the, you know, these are the spreaders and these are not, and then looking at it like, um, certain people need to be tested and certain people don't when it seems there is an equal opportunity between the vaccinated and unvaccinated to carry it and to pass it along and to catch it. So I, I agree with you. The, agree. the narrative needs to change. It, it does. And um, it's not just the unvaccinated freedoms that are gone. It's the vaccinated freedoms are gone. Uh, you can't eat popcorn at the movie theaters. Like there's a lot of things. And so though they may seem little to people, but, um, you know, if they start getting into boosters, where do we go from there? Um, mm -hmm. Are all of a sudden the fully vaccinated people now in my camp and now they have to keep up with boosters every six months? Um, mm -hmm. Something has to change. And the narrative that they're, that they're continuing uh, to tote is the same narrative that has been throughout. Um, if, if they really want us to believe in the science, they'd be changing that narrative. They'd be talking mm -hmm. about these things and revamping uh, their stance on what, what they really uh, need to do here. Yes, I, I, think, I think we are seeing a breakdown. Um, slowly but surely there is, there's been a breakdown and an understanding, you know, this is why um, health officials are, are encouraging the boosters uh, to bring about added protection. Uh, but regardless, um, agreed. And uh, so what's next for you, Brian? Where do you, where do you go from here? Um, I'm going to keep speaking up. I'm going to um, continue to uh, be the policeman uh, and I'm going to stick up for other people's rights as well. And uh, I'm going to continue to show courage to so that others can can speak up as well and uh, that they're not um, scared by uh, all the scare tactics and the fear mongering that's out there. Uh, so you'll see me uh, um, around. I won't be going anywhere. And uh, I look forward to speaking with you again. I look forward to it too. And for those watching that are interested in seeing the statistics that we're talking about from the Alberta government website, I will have a link on uh, on the story uh, that is that this video is included with. So just wanted to say thank you, Brian, uh, personally for your 24 years of service as a police officer in Calgary. And uh, thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. And uh, just wishing you a very Merry Christmas as we go through the break. Well, it's been my honor for 24 years to serve Calgarians and a very Merry Christmas to you. Thanks, Brian.